Hello, this is the second tutorial about the pi root. So in this tutorial, I will cover how to use the uh, root uh, in pi root. Okay, sorry, tree in pi root. So the structure of the tutorial first, I will um, load in the class from a C++ definition. Uh, header, uh, header, I mean header files, and the second I will uh, use uh, uh, this opportunity to demonstrate a, a trees method like show, a scan, and draw. Then another technique, uh, loop the tree manually, then write out the tree to a T file. Okay, so I think the first part is the most difficult part <laughs> uh, to some some person because uh, for me I think uh, reading a tree is something is not always uh, tr uh, easy sometimes tricky uh, especially you have definition or class definition is not easy to find that so let's get in so to uh, this part is a little bit weird because uh, you uh, use the C++ class in a Python <laughs> okay so how we how can we do this so before we taking a look at the class, we are just talking about how to do the loading part. So we need to uh, use the the as click to compile the class. The, in this case, it's just, uh, just a very dummy simple particle class that edge. Then uh, to compile it, then you will generate a file. Uh, the so file share object file and we load in it then we code another line like uh, let's from root import our class okay so actually three step so for first step you need to compile your file so you call the root in a uh, particle class dot edge then plus sign that means a kind of compile instead of load it, this is load and this is this will compile and okay so that's good all right so it will generate a bunch of file like a dictionary file and dot uh, d and dot so file okay so this is the first step then the second step is to call the uh, global variable g, uh, g system then call the load uh, this uh, dash h file here okay not the not the not, not that h but it's a dash h okay then uh, you should ready to go by from root import uh, particle dot, particle class here actually is this class name here okay so now I should be able to uh, access my uh, access this class just uh, as a just a normal uh, way to instantiate the object from uh, Python just uh, this okay so go be back here, here. so we already create the uh, share object so we can do this just copy paste ah, I forget something <laughs> here so let's redo it again uh, Python import root then I call this okay so I should able to access that okay that's good so let's go back to the uh, class definition this is C++ class not a Python class so um, you can see the structure here uh, basically uh, you don't need a T object in, you don't need a inherited from T object here uh, but just uh, keep is a good habit uh, just keep a, a line here so uh, you have public variable uh, one is for uh, energy another is for position this is an array uh, with the three uh, elements X and Y and Z here and you have setter here and you have another setter for energy okay then you have a getter here and the final one is the something for kind of internal identification something because 
the class can be developed several uh, along the time uh, by several people, and maybe you can update that. So in this case, is a version one here. Okay, so now you have basic idea. We have the energy and position as our public variable here. So let's let's play around play around it. Okay, so. Let's create a tree. This is the hard part. <laughs> okay, so create a tree first is easy. So you call the uh, T tree class and put some parameter for the constructor. So the first one is the key. Uh, I call the T that's I generally use for the tree. Then is the title here of my tree for a demo here. Okay, good. Should be all right. So we have a tree, but nothing like that. So the tree is a data structure for the root itself. So it it can have very efficient to access the entries, but for me, I think it's much harder to uh, modify. So it's good for access, not easy for modify. Sometimes you want to modify that, you need to loop it all the thing and. To create another branch, so create another tree and loop all the thing again. Okay, I will not cover that today. I was just a very simple, easy um, manipulation operation for the tree cell. So, okay, so now the tree we create, but there's no no branch in it. So the, we want to add a branch. The branch is to contain the data in the uh, my particle object. That's is the object from uh, the particle class. Okay. So wh what we do is uh, in this case is simple. Um, even you can see the code is much uh, uh, easy to read in in the py py uh, py root version. <laughs> simple version sometimes uh, depends on the variable type. <laughs> Okay, this is a object. It's a class from a class, so very easy, uh, relatively easy than C plus plus. So you call the branch name. In this case, I particle. Um, then I, I I link this branch to the variable my particle here. Okay. Okay. So just copy that. Paste on it. Okay. Now. We have tree. We have object. Now we fill data in it and get that data to, and uh, we get in the data and we fill the tree. So when you call the fill, that you will write all the data. Uh, I mean the public data, energy and, um, and energy and position into the tree as one entry. So you. You call the field one entry, another entry, three entry. So in this you should have three entries, right? So paste on it. Okay. So you feel that we just copy this create some dummy data here. So how can we know the data for a given tree? In this case, we already know that our tree is T here. So we t let's say use show function type uh which type one to the first one. Okay, so you shows the energy is ten because we feel it's ten here and then one through three here. You can do the same thing for one second event. So this is a four, five, six and energy twenty. Also you can use a scan method. The scan is pretty interesting because it kind of a very handy function to before you draw something you can scan the data. For example, this is um, we'd like to try the energy first. How about this? So we call the branch name particle dot energy. Okay, scan it. So this is a row is the entry. So and uh, the the first events, um, second, third one, energy is uh, one, a 10, 20, 30. Uh, something you will see the column uh, width is too uh, small, so you can 
uh, put the option here. So the first thing is the the the, the quantity you want to scan. This then you will see the condition. For example, you want the energy uh, greater than twenty. The just show the the enter with greater than oh let's say uh, fifteen, and this. So how about this? So we should just to enter the the first one just uh, gone because it not passed to the condition here. And also you can see the column size is much wider now it's twenty. Okay. So um, now we uh, we scan a little different thing. This is an array. So what the response for array? Uh, it's quite smart. Okay, let's show you. So you will show this is a f the first uh, event. You have uh, three uh, element, right? First uh, for x and y and z, and this is the the value here. So next thing is here, and the third thing is here. All right. So if you want to see the first one. Only you can just type zero. You will just see this, or you can also apply the math for it. So just type uh, let's see, let do this copy and paste square it. Yeah, you see one four seven one sixteen is forty nine. Just by double that, by by square it. Uh, another useful function is draw. This will create a histogram, uh, for one D or two two D histogram if you put two parameter on it, like um this. Uh, let's just do a dummy testing. <laughs> Okay, so the, the the G of option just don't show the graph, but now we want to show the graph. So you put here. Uh, you probably cannot see because just three that This is dot one, two, this is three here. By the way, this is you can uh, use the editor here. Then go to the dot here. Okay, so maybe you want to change dot size. Okay, you see one, two, three. <laughs> this is very small. Um, so if you just put a one, uh, should do it here. Okay, now it's just a one D histogram here. It's three event. <laughs> Uh, energy is 10, 20, 30 here. Very, very easy. <laughs> All right. So the next thing is uh, sometimes you can use a uh, draw to loop through your histogram and then create a uh, create a like a, you know you cre create a histogram on a canvas and retreat it. But somehow you. Sometimes you want to do more complicated way. Um, for example, you apply the particle gates or timing gate, a lot of gates on it. So it's more complicated. Just put a lot of uh, gate condition in this tiny space here, you know. Uh, so it's important to know how to loop to a tree here. So I, here I just cover the loop to the technique to loop through a tree. For the loop to the t ch chain object, let's a uh, uh, object contain several t tree object. Uh, we need a different technique. So this is e this is a easy one. So just loop to a tree. So loop to a tree. You need to know how many entries you want to loop. So you can use the t get entry fast object here. So then you get into it. This loop for loop, you have to update by code get entry and put the uh, uh, the index here. Then the nice thing to use the pyroot is that you don't need to create a variable and link uh, the object uh, because the 
tree, or you can just directly access the object uh, or access the the attributes, whatever, uh, directly. So what I mean is, in C++, you need to set branch address something, then some, then apply to something, and for every variable you want to link. But in Pyro itself, it's simple. You just call T, then branch name, then the this is the class, right? Then you have public object energy and a position here, and you just directly uh, retrieve the value. <laughs> when and each entry get updated from the I here. So let's do this very quickly. So copy that, pass. So you will print out something here like. Uh, Okay, <laughs> not very nicely. So let's do this way. Let's exit that. Run I interaction mode. Then you roll to basic tree here. You print out the information here. Okay, so finally, again, you want to write out the data to the T file, you just code uh, uh, tree dot write, then close the file is important because if you don't close that, sometimes a uh, funny thing would happen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I think this is a very basic uh, uh, operation for the tree. I hope you can enjoy the this series of tutorial. Okay, see you next time.